And the one that drags, so it's attached, is permitted in the provinces. Vitanya, mm. uh, and we have a Baraisa. Eisechun neged hanigrar. What does it mean, the bolt that drags? Shenoalin bo bamikdash avalo bamidina, which may be used to lock in the temple but not in the provinces. So what does that mean? Kol shekashur v'talui v'rosho magir la'aretz Any bolt that's attached and suspended Now it says, but its end reaches the ground So it's touching the ground as the, as the door's moving Rabbi Yehuda Omer Ze af bamedina mutar. This is permitted even in. How do you say that? The country. Yeah, he says in the rest of the country. In the rest of the country. 
אלא ראדה איזה הוא שבמדינה אסור what is a bolt that's prohibited in the provinces in the country כל שאינו לא קשור ולא תלוי any bolt that's not attached or suspended nor suspended the shomto excuse me ושומתו ומניחו בקרן זווית and instead one removes it and leaves it in a corner so that sentence read Rebbe Huda says this bolt is permitted even in the provinces rather what is a bolt that is prohibited in, in the, out in the country anything that is not attached nor suspended and rather one removes it and leaves it in a corner and he has added from the door so and one removes it from the door, from the door. and places it in a corner Vamar Rabbi Yehoshua Bar Abba Mishmei Deula Man Tana Neger Hanigrar who is the Tana who taught a bolt which is attached and drags which cannot be used in the out in the countryside Rabbi Eliezer he Amale do you want to say anything further there yes, or he's added whose opinion in this case is identical to his opinion in the Mishnah with regard to the window shutter it is certainly referring to a shutter that is attached If it is not attached, Rabbi Eliezer holds that it is prohibited for use even in the temple. Amale, he said to Rabbi Yirmiya, so Rabbi Rav, Rav, Abba mm. says to Rabbi Yirmiya, Ana de Amri ki haitana, I stated in accordance with this other tana, permitting the use of an unattached bolt, mm. Tanya, as it was taught in a Baraisa, Kane Shehit Kino Baal Habait Lihiot Poteach Venoel Bo. A rod? Do you have a rod? He has a reed. A reed? Ah, and in Sonsino they said a cane. So a reed that a homeowner prepared. So he prepared it for use, meaning he would have had, gave it intention on Shabbat, I assume. for Shabbat, for use in unlocking and locking a door. Bizman shekashu v'talui papetach, when it's attached, it says attached to the wall. Well, here it says when it is tied and hanging in the entrance. Right, and suspended in the doorway. Poteach v'noel bo, he may use it to unlock and lock the door. the door. So what we seem to be talking about <coughs> is a piece of cane or very thick reed that you hang by the door and you thrust into a hole that goes through from the door and into the door post yeah. and it keeps it closed. Right. Sounds exactly what it sounds like. Ein kashur v'talui If it's not attached and suspended Ein poteach v'ne elbo, he may not use it to unlock and lock the door. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer metukan. If it was prepared, if it was prepared, you can use it. Apal pisha eno kashur, even if it's not attached. So according to Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel, the only preparation required is mental designation. That's what Rashi says. Well, <coughs> or some physical designation would be enough too, if you cut it to well, size. Well, he says either way. Mm. Oh, if you cut it to size. If you cut it to size, that ah. would indicate you're going to 
use it. So there can, that's what I'm getting at. There yeah, can but, be a but, physical but designation, that, not just mental. But that would be like, um, that would mean that you're kind of using it in an everyday sense anyway. Like, what's the point of saying all this? It's permitted to use it on Shabbat. According to this authority, yep. Rabban Gamliel, even if it's not attached. Even if it's not attached. It actually makes me think now, are they talking, are they actually talking about something that was not used every day? That's really what they're saying, isn't it? Well, I think maybe they're talking about, you know, the methodical housekeeper, the sloppy one. The person who has the bolt of whatever type, re whatever, hanging by the door ready to slip it in. Or the person who's not so careful and just throws it on the nearest shelf. <coughs> yeah. Ready to pick it up and yeah. shove it in. Yeah, that's good. Ama Rav Yehuda Bar Shilat Ama Rav Asi Ama Rav Yochanan Halacha Karaban Shimon Ben Gamliel Umi Ama Rav Yochanan Hachi Did Rav Yochanan actually say this? Say what? Do you have Rav Yochanan? Uh, Where's Rav Yochanan? Uh, did Rabbi Yochanan really say this? Didn't we learn of the Mishnah, etc.? Right. Shall we keep, we'll keep going? Yeah. The Hatznam, we learned in the Mishnah. Kol kisui, kisuye hakelim, all vessel covers, shiyesh lahem betachiza, that have handles, nitalin be Shabbat, they can be moved on Shabbat. Yeah? Yeah. Vama Rav Yehuda Bar Shil Amar Rav Asi Amar Rav Yochanan Vehu Shiesh Torah Kli Alehen. This is only if the if the covers function as utensils, because otherwise they'd be mukta. Vechitema, and if you should say, Hachanami de Ikatorat Kli Alav, here too. With Rabbi Shema Ben Gamliel and the, and the reed, with a reed that can function as a utensil, Umi Ba'e Rabbi Shema Ben Gamliel Torah Kli Alav. Does Rabbi Shema Ben Gamliel require that something be a functional utensil? Vatanya, as it was taught in a Baraisa, Chariot Shel Dekel. Sheg daran leshem etzim. If you had hardened branches of a date palm that was harvested for firewood, obviously a mukta. Venim lachalehen lishiva, and he changed his mind regarding them and wanted them for sitting. Tzarich likshor. He must tie them in order to prove that they're not for sitting up. Right? Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer Ein Tarek Likshor He doesn't need to tie them. He can mentally designate them. Rabbi Yochanan Sevir Aleib Kavate Bechada Rabbi Yochanan concurs with Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel in one respect Upalig Aleib Bechada And he disagrees with him in one respect. So Rabbi Yochanan concurs with Gamliel, in that he permits the use of the reed as a lock, even though it's not attached, but he disagrees with him in that the reed should be able to function as a utensil as opposed to just a mental designation. Mm. Ah, actually has to have a regular purpose as a utensil. And yep. that's closer to what I was suggesting about something that you actually use that's just on a shelf instead of fixing it to the door. This is related. Darash Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha Apitcha Deresh Galuta. 
So uh, Rabbi Yitzchak Nacha discoursed, he was giving a talk, at the entrance of the Resh Galuta's house. Halacha ke Rabbi Eliezer, he said. Meaning that a shadow may be used to close a window, only if it's attached and suspended. Mativ Rav Amram, Rav Amram challenged this with the, with the Mishnah. Umid umidivrehem lamadenu shepokakin or modidin the koshim b'shabbat, and from their words we learned that we may shatter, measure, and tie on Shabbat. So shatter is the window, mm. measure is a mikvah, and tie is tying what? A knot. Uh, tying a knot, right? A temporary knot. Amale, so Abay said to Rav Amram, Mai Datech, what's your intention with this cha- with this challenge? What do you have there for Mai Datech? What is your opinion? What is your that, opinion? That well, I the like proof that is decisive. That the proof is decisive. What, is that a question, that the proof is decisive? Abay said to Rav Amram, what is your opinion? And then he's added, that the proof is decisive because, and then you go back to translation, it was taught in the unattributed Mishnah. Ah, Mishum de Katani Satama, because it teaches, well, I've got here anonymously, mm. uh, as it says here, Halakha generally follows anonymous Mishnahs. Neged Hanigrar Nami Satama he, so this is the anonymous Mishnah. A bolt which drags, so it's attached uh, and drags, is also anonymous. Mm. And he's added the halakha should be in accordance with that Mishnah as well. Mm. If they're both unattributed. Ah, thank you. That, the whole time I haven't, I, now I understand. So, the afilu. Hachimaserav. Nevertheless, the practice is greater, is greater proof than an ordinary ruling. And he's added, even though the two Mishnayot are of equal weight, since one of them not only cites an unattributed opinion, but also relates an incident where the sages shattered a window, that source is decisive. Mm. Is there a halakha? Anything about this? Uh, moving the covers of vessels, that's the halakha that's noted here. You don't need that, do we? No. Are there any no notes? I'm curious just about this. Practice uh, is greater proof. Action is greater, yes. Since there is a contradiction between the two unattributed Mishnayot, the action is significant in determining the halakha. However, the Gemara employs the actions of the sages in determining the halakha in other cases as well. In the Jerusalem Talmud, this is phrased, there is an individual opinion in accordance with the unattributed Mishnah, and there, and there is an individual opinion in accordance with the unattributed Mishnah. <coughs> yeah. mm-hmm. That doesn't help much. It doesn't get us beyond what was said earlier, that uh, the unattributed Mishnah, which has an action attached to it, after I crank the unattributed yeah. one that has no action attached to it. But I suppose the action of the sages confirms the preference the sages had of the two Mishnahant. It stands to reason, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Okay, uh, Mishnah. All vessel covers that have handles. Nitalim b'Shabbat can be moved on Shabbat. Amar Rabbi Yossi, b'Medvarim Amurim regarding what kind of covers was this? Bechisui Karkaot regarding covers of 
the ground. Where there's a hole in the ground. Yeah. Aval bekisui hakelim regarding covers of vessels, ben kach or ben kach nitalim b'shabbat. In either case, handles or not, they can be taken on Shabbat. Uh, so, a whole cover on the ground needs to have a handle if you're going to move it. Yes. Whereas the ones for a vessel, whether it has a handle or not, can be moved, according to that Mishnah. And the logic, I mean, if you're talking about a hole in the ground, a pit or whatever, it's going to have... It's going to be bigger and it's going to need a handle to pick it up. Think of a manhole cover. Mm. Unless you have something to hook it up with. Yeah. You know, you're you're showing that it's not intended for moving. Yeah. But um so the way the halacha um works here is that if it's attached to the ground without a handle, then it's an act of building. Oh, is that the way it works? Yep. Good. I, I thought it might be that you could clearly because it's got no handle, you've clearly designated it as something that will be mukt on Shabbat. Yeah. Because you have well, it's like it's everything. not a utensil anymore. Mm. If it's a utensil, you can touch it. Yeah. Amar Rabbi Yehuda Bar Shila Amar Rabbi Asi Amar Rabbi Yochanan Vehu Sheyesh Torah Kli Alehen This is where, or only if, the cover can function as a utensil. Dechule Alma all agree kisui karkaot, the covers of holes of the ground, im yesh lahem if they have handles, uh, yes, they can be moved, il lo lo, but if not, no, they can't be moved. Kisui hakelim, covers of utensils, afal gav te'en lahem beit ach, do you have vessels or utensils there? Vessels. Yeah, vessels is better, better than utensils. Um, recovers of, of vessels. Afal gav te ein lahem betachiza. Even if they do not have handles, they can be moved. Kiplige, when do they disagree? Bekelim dechabrinu ba'ara. Regarding vessels that were attached to the ground. Ah, so a vessel attached to the ground is just like a hole in the ground, Peter. It has a similar um, a- attribute. A vessel attached to the ground is the same as a hole in the ground. I can see the logic of that. Mar Savar Gazrinan, one master holds the Tanakama. Uh, that the rabbis made a gezerah, um, meaning that when they had, so the gezerah is when they have no handles, the covers are not allowed to be moved because of the similarity to a cover of a hole. Umar Savar Lo Gazrinan and the other master Rabbi Yossi holds the rabbis never made a gezerah. <laughs> we should kind of know that. That should have been written somewhere. Lishna Achrina, an alternative version is like this. Ki plige. When do they disagree? Bechisui Tanur, regarding the cover of an oven, that is a vessel attached to the ground. Mar Madame Le Lechisui Karka, the Tanakama compares it to the cover of a hole in the ground, Omar Medame Leilichi Soi Kelim, and the other master, Rav Yossi, compares it to the cover of an ordinary vessel, which is, sounds to me like exactly the same thing. Not Just quite. Not quite. Um, if ovens are normally attached to the ground, right. remember we learned this yep. a day or two ago, so if the oven is attached to the ground, then the hollow at the centre of the oven must have the same status as a hole in the ground, right. and a lid that <coughs> covers it cannot be moved. And a lid that covers it cannot be moved. Yeah, right. Whereas, if you don't t- 
take it as being attached to the ground in that way. Say it's that second oven that we saw, then a lid that's on top of that. It's a normal Kaylee and can be brilliant. Hydron Allah call her Seven and a half years. Chapter 18, Shmonasa. Shmonasa. Oh, we were on, I didn't realise we were on the second page. Okay, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> Not much of it there. And it's called Methanin. Methanin. Mefanin afilu arba vachamesh kupot shel teven veshel tvua. We can clear away on Shabbos this is. Four, even four, or five boxes of straw or grain. Mipne haorchim u mipne bitu beta midrash. Because of guests or because of. I don't know what word they use here. What word do you have? Well, due to the guests and due to suspension. Uh, the word they used in, in the Sonsino was really good. What was it? It was something like the, like the, not the nullification, like the, uh, like, what's the word here? Uh, it's bitul means like cancellation or nullification. Yeah. Can, well, cancellation. Obsolescence, in a way. Mm-hmm. I'll just read what he yeah. says, including his expansions. On Shabbat, one may move even four or five baskets of straw and uh, baskets of produce due to the guests who require that place to sit and due to the suspension of Torah study in the study hall, right. where space is required to seat the students. However, one may not move these items to create space in the storeroom. In the storeroom. Hmm. That's interesting. Because... In the storeroom. How does they translate it? Well, no, they also say, they say store here. Hmm. And in the Sonsina, they also use the word store. Avalo et otsar. So, not a store. And I think the way the Gemara is going to explain it further on, I feel, is if it's a store, as in an accumulation of goods, of you're goods. thinking. Correct. Rather than a room in which you put goods. Correct. He follows uh, the line of it's a place where you put goods. A storeroom makes a whole lot more sense, except for one minor fact, and that is, why would you bother even considering that in the storeroom? Okay, I can come up with a suggestion. Mm. You have your study hall, which is sometimes used for meals. Yeah. And beside it, you have a room in which you keep stuff. Stuff. That supplies the study complex, which might include um, cakes of dates, you know, some oil, <coughs> mm. things of that nature. You know, like, like a pantry, yep. if you like. Sure. And anything else that might be needed. In which case, you know, I mean, rather than keeping these stores in the study hall itself, you might have a, a room beside it where this stuff is put all aside so it's out of the way. So the question is, why would you clear that away? Maybe you might clear it away to give more place for students to sit when they're eating. You might want to move things. 
or take things out of sto- the storeroom to create space in some way. <coughs> okay, let's continue. Yep. Good thoughts. Mefanin truma tahora. We can clear away truma that is tahor. U demai. U maserishon. Shinitla trumato. Where trauma was taken. U maser sheni. Vehekte shiniftu. And maser sheni. Or consecrated produce that was redeemed. See, all these things might be stored beside the study hall as a safe place until they can be regularized. That's different from a storeroom, though. The way you just said it then is the way I'm thinking. But but maybe your intention was that, uh, that in a storeroom. Yes, in the storeroom. Okay. That's <coughs> um, I mean, you wouldn't want them to get confused with anything else you might have about. You'd want to separate them. Although you might have, like, designated areas. Mm. Oh, I mean, you can always label the boxes or paint them different colours. I mean, there are all sorts of ways you can differentiate. But this at least gets it all safely out of the way. That's all I'm thinking. Actually, that's very interesting. In today's day and age, we build with, you know, let's make a room there. Mm. Let's make a room there. And we'll have a room there. And maybe in those days, like... Well, we know it didn't work that way. We know that the whole family lived in one room. Exactly. And if you're very comfortably off, yeah. you might have a second room in which you kept your Torah scroll. Right. So rooms were at a premium. Mm. A, a room in and of itself, yeah. Okay, let's keep going. It's very interesting discussions. Well, they had turmos hayabesh and dried turmos. <coughs> I've got lupines. Yes. Mipne shehu machal leizim because it's food for goats. Since dried tomas is used as goat food, goat feed, it is not muksa. Aval lo et tevel, but we can't clear away tevel. Do you know what tevel is? Untithed produce. Untithed produce. Velo et masa rishon shelo nitla trumato, and you can't move masa rishon where truma has not been taken. Actually, this is that's very interesting, isn't it? Because now we're talking about things where, like, you'd need to separate them. Like, I would, like, don't mm. touch that. <laughs> I haven't dealt with that yet. I might say. I can just imagine, like, even in my own talking about. even in my own house, I can just imagine. Please don't, <laughs> don't touch that. I haven't dealt with it yet. Velo et masse sheni vehektesh shelo niftu, nor masse sheni or consecrated produce that was not redeemed. Velo et haluf. Inedible when raw, even to livestock and domestic fowl. Since one may not cook on Shabbos, the raw loaf is mukta. Ah. Velo et ha chardal, and not mustard. Mustard is edible only after it's ground. Since grinding is forbidden on Shabbos, the unground mustard is mukta. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel matir beluf. So he permits clearing the loof, mipnesha humachal oravin, because it's food for ravens. Mm. Wealthy people would breed ravens as a status symbol. Would they? According to Rashi. Or for ornamental and entertainment purposes. Well, they're intelligent birds, so... That's true. Uh, Chavile kash... Regarding bundles of stubble, the chavile etim, bundles of twigs, the chavile zradim, bundles of tender reeds. Tender reeds? Can be used as fodder. Im hitkinan lemachal behema, metal tulinotan. If you set them aside for animal feed, we can move them. The im love ein metal tulin. Otan, and if not, we may not move them. Gemara. Hashta, hashta chamesh mepanin. Now, 
we may clear away five. <coughs> Arba, Mibaya. Was it necessary to say four? Actually, it doesn't really mean was it necessary. Arba, Mibaya means... What's the... Well, his translates as necessary. Yeah? Okay. Amma Rav Chista. Arba Mechamesh. Four from a store with only four from five. Go on, Peter. He says, the Mishnah means, Rav Chista said, the Mishnah means that one may move four out of five baskets. Ah, right, that's what I've got too. I just didn't read it properly. Right, thank you. So four out of five chavilot, you can move. <coughs> uh, do you have in brackets then? But not all of them, he said. Ike de Amre Arba Otsar Katan. Others report four from a small store. Storeroom. Storeroom, he's telling Storeroom. 24. And five baskets from a large storeroom. The Chamesh Otsar Gadol. And five from a large storeroom. Ah, the fact that we're making the difference between small and large yeah. suggests that we are talking about a storeroom rather than just storing in a general sense. Right. Um, the the I don't know if you've got this. You, I would assume you might have this explanation there. But but it was about when you when you removed enough boxes, it would um, it would expose the floor. Uh, there, there's some talk about uh, digging holes in the floor, and so you would leave enough so that the floor would remain undisturbed. So if you've got things stacked, you take everything out except the bottom row. Right. Where you won't be pulling things out and straight. Yeah. Uh, but not umai aval umai aval lo etata. And what does it mean? But not the store. Shelo yatchil ba'otza or storeroom, right? But not the storeroom. Shelo yatchil ba'otza tchila, that one may not begin taking from a store on Shabbos. Uh, if it was previously unused, he translates that is that as it means that one may not use the storeroom for the first time. If he has never taken supplies from this storeroom, he may not begin moving baskets from it. Right. Or money. And whose view is this? So, or money. And whose view is this? Mishnah. Rabbi Huda hid it le It is Rabbi Huda who holds, who holds the broad application of mukta. I'll read a little bit in yep. little note here. We have learned earlier in this tractate, in 44 to 46, that Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Shimon differ markedly with regard to the law of Mukta. Although all, ac all accept the basic prohibition of Mukta, they disagree, disagree about the extent of the restrictions. Rabbi Shimon is more lenient, and so is described as holding a Mukta. There is no broad application of Mukta. Rabbi Yehuda is more stringent, his opinion is reported to be yesh muksa. There is a broad application of muksa. As has been explained here, the dispute stems from a disagreement over how to interpret the basic rule that whatever was set aside from being used on the Shabbos is muksa. According to Rabbi Huda, this includes any object that in the normal course of events does not stand to be used on the Shabbos. Since the owner did not intend or expect to use the object, it lacks preparation for Shabbos and is Muqsa. 
Rabbi Shimon, on the other hand, holds that the mere fact that an object does not stand to be used is not a consideration. Rather, as long as something is fit for use, it is not rendered moksa unless the owner consciously sets it aside. Thus, with respect to the straw of produce that has not yet been touched, Rabbi Huda would prohibit the produce of the produce as moksa, since the person had not planned on using it on Shabbos, and even should he decide to use it now, it would remain moksa. Mm. Well, Shmuel Amar and Shmuel says, I suppose we'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. A um, couple of things here. There's four out of five. It goes on to say the same applies to three out of four. The concept is that one may not move all of the baskets. He must leave some in place. That sounds very reasonable. Mm. And the halacha on one may move even What's four What's the Hebrew? Five. The Hebrew is... Um, is it Arba? See, that's... See, Arba. This is the, the Chamesh. Yeah, so and five. Although the, the preceding word, word is Afilu. Afilu. Even, even four and five, five. Which is ambiguous. Mm. Which suggests that maybe the original thought was about a smaller amount. Mm. And someone's gone to say, well, you know, one or two of this, but... Even four or five, that. Yeah, well, that's the way it sounds to us. Mm. But no, it doesn't suggest say that anyway. No. Mm. Sorry to say. Anyway, that. one may move even four or five baskets. Moving some of the contents of a storehouse to make room for guests is permitted. This is done in the following manner. If the storehouse is large, one moves five baskets, each with a capacity of three sail, yeah. to make room for <coughs> guests. And if the warehouse is small, and there are only five baskets in it, one may move only four out of the five. Although the ruling is fundamentally in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, the number of baskets was restricted to prevent exertion, as per the opinion of Rav Chista. Also, the simple understanding of the Mishnah and the Gemara is in accordance with Rav Chista's opinion.